Good morning, evening, or afternoon, wherever, what time it is when you watch this, because it's on YouTube, and you can watch YouTube whenever you want. It's a great platform for that. Um, <laughs> uh, we are the Mighty Misfit Menagerie, or... Mm. Mm. Oh, come on. Weak. I want you guys to do that again, because this is that was first weak. official... Mm. Come on! <laughs> One, two, or, <laughs> three... <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Uh, we have our uh, patron Scott yes. Bain joining us uh, as a special guest star tonight because we had two people who couldn't show up for this little mini game of ours. So it seemed like a perfect opportunity. He's also worth wearing our first official. Uh, I'm sorry, unofficial uh, Mighty Misfit Menagerie T-shirt, which does read no, no, no. "Leo is the best." Mm. There's a TM. There's a TM down here. It says MMCast TM. <laughs> <laughs> it's trademarked and everything. It's, it's legit. Um, which is now my new favorite shirt. Scott's gonna send it to me uh, when he's done with it. Uh, um, I don't know how I feel about that, Rio. <laughs> but Scott, you're one of our oldest patrons, so it's great to have you on. Um, I mean, we haven't had patrons for a super long time, but you are one of the first ones. So. Oh, thank God! I thought that was a birthday joke. <laughs> it is also oh, yeah. it also completely unknown to me uh, it is also happens to be scott's birthday facebook told me that um so <laughs> other patrons up. don't think just because it's your birthday that you get to be <laughs> <laughs> no i had to pay for here. where i'm at today <laughs> he's still paying uh, literally and i'll be paying later too <laughs> I say emotionally by having to wear that damn shirt. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the best shirt ever. <laughs> <laughs> Any shirt with my name on it is a good shirt, honestly. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're going to be doing about an hour and a half to two hours of uh, my homebrew campaign that I have uh, been unsuccessfully trying to get to completion since I was about 19, 18, maybe. I don't know. Very long, very, very, very long time I've had this campaign going. Uh, it's called the Isles of Madness, but uh, for the stream, we're going with Archipelago of Madness because I liked the word archipelago. Helena hates the word archipelago, but um, that's neither here nor there. Uh, okay. Helena, did you by chance do a recap of last episode or no? I didn't take notes, but I <laughs> can try and do... Uh, if you want to try, I, I'll fill in details if I remember them. Actually, excited to be here for a live Helena recap. Just, just let you know, it's such a hit with everybody. So I'm actually excited <laughs> to be here live for it. I'm not part of it, but I get to listen to it live. I just want to point out that me, Mark, and Coulter put ourselves out there to DM these games, and the one thing people are like, our favorite part of your whole stream is Helena's recap. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's my favorite part of the whole stream. So, not, not to derail this at all, but you, you guys have seen, like, Ant the Ant-Man movie, right? Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know when his friend does the recap and everybody's talking in the voice? So that's what I picture in my head is when Helena talks, <laughs> is it, it, it zooms in on all the characters in her voice doing the talking. That's exactly what it is. It's exactly what it is every time. That Wait is one of the best compliments I can receive. So thank you for that. Hey, you're welcome. Uh, but this is a challenge for you, YouTube. If you watch this, go and make a compilation video of one of our things. It zooms in. Like, remake that scene, but with Helena. <laughs> That's a diehard fan right there. <laughs> we have any of those yet. <laughs> that one exists. Okay, so... Boom! An alarm is going off. We're all in cells. We're like, what? What is our name? We don't even know. We're confused. Alarm's going off. We're all trying to get out. I don't know anybody's name, so it's really hard for me to talk about it anyway. So Coulter is a weird manta ray being. What's that race again? Uh, I have a simic hybrid. And his name awesome. is Bellin. Oh, I did write this down. Okay, here we go. <laughs> also, also. Here we go. <laughs> also. Oh, I was going to say in Roll20, but then I remembered you can't see everyone else's characters. 
So never mind. I and I looked. I did look actually. I say that. Okay. So he's like banging on the walls. He's whining. He's in there. And then I I was Helena. calling out masterfully. <laughs> I was, no, you were being a whiny little B word. Well, because he was the last out. I get it. It, that, that was some context. Because he was whi- being a whiny bee. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Whiny we'll bellin, stop interrupting you. <laughs> <laughs> Boleyn. 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 A whiny Boleyn. I, I wrote the fucking name. I know how it's pronounced. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Helena, continue. Well. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So, and then I am a little winged kobold and I'm like, eh, eh, eh. I'm trying to like wrench the door off. Hank is named Quarth. Quarth, but Quarth. Quarth. And is a human? No. It's a lizard folk. Lizard folk. Oh, another lizard folk. Fun. Okay. <laughs> and so he is able, he's able to like just mind his way out of that, meaning he uses his intelligence and he knows some numbers and he's able to get out. And then, so gradually we're all coming out and Coulter's Bellin is like really upset about the alarm because yeah, maybe we should be. We realize, wait, we're on a fucking ship. We look at the windows and we're in some sort of crazy Dyson sphere. There's land up here, there's land down there. It's coming at us no matter what, because we're crashing. So we're like, okay, so maybe we need to do about something about that. So we're like, do, 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 walk along. We do find uh, what looks to be an engine room or actually hold on we don't go there first we see some creepy mind spider babies and we're like we're not going in there so we avoid that area um but then yogi but what is that oh niyogi they're awful they're super creepy anyway um and so oh my goodness so we avoid that then Belen's like, let me go up up a level, and uh, me, Siggy, is gonna be is my character's name. <laughs> I decided, um, and so Siggy. Oh, and also there was a tree frog. Damn it, Jake is not here. I'm sorry, I'm messing up all over the place. Jake is tree frog, being very cute. Uh, his name is Chaitin. Chaitin. <laughs> Kitten? Kitten. You're not Ketten. Okay, it was like you're not confirming. Okay. Uh, okay. So then we go up. We find some weapons, and so that's kind of cool. We arm ourselves, but um, Quarth is like, I gotta go find the engine room. Hello, we're crashing. So he goes and he finds it, but then he's like stunned because he's like, I don't get how any of this works. I must understand. He kills the one mind. Yogi that was in there that was probably controlling and probably trying to get the ship to not crash but he was creepy so I totally understand anyway we brace for impact we crash into this <laughs> we crash into this deserty area you got an escape pod but yeah oh right the escape pods boom shoot off unfortunately we missed all of our gear from our former lives um and probably a lot of stuff that could have been really helpful but <laughs> We, we escaped. Panicked. Yes, did we didn't laser. know what was going on. You did get guns, though. So <clears throat> Yeah, we did get some weapons. So there was a bit of a trade-off. So we crash land in this deserty area. We're like, whoa, there's some water over there. But what's in that water? We get a little closer. There's like crazy tentacles attacks. So we're like, okay, we're going to stay away from that water. And we keep walking. There's like some green area a couple days journey away. And we're like, we're going to head towards that. Boom. <laughs> and then there was the there was the, the creepy the creepy tree, but yes. Oh the, yeah. ew, that had like pus in them, girl. Yeah. I don't want to recall. What that. did that taste like, by the way? Uh it tasted like uh rotting meat and grape soda. That's right. Because the lizard man actually kind of liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't dislike it. I never <laughs> haven't tasted it before. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Who's Scott? Oh, no, Z's. <laughs> oh, we lost Scott momentarily. He was like, Helena didn't talk about me enough. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and for, I mean, I assume everybody's seen the previous one, but we've all been filling in our stats as we go. 
as we try rolls and find out what we have from them. Yeah. I mean, I'm doing my best, but it's, that's not where my strengths are, as you all know. <laughs> it's a little confusing, but it's, I think it's part of the fun. I figured out seven, possibly. But, Rio, do you have contact with our our missing member? Yeah. Boom, well, recapitated. Thank you, Helena. <laughs> um, and I believe we ended with all of you around a campfire. Uh, as Jake has, will not be able to join us this evening because he has a very important test tomorrow, um, we will just say that he has gone catatonic due to not having enough water. Stress! <laughs> I'm going to make a little bed for him in a little bag, and I'm going to carry him around. <laughs> He's little, at least. Mm-hmm. He's the same size as Helena, so maybe somebody else should carry him around. <laughs> I, I can him. carry him. I'll carry him. <laughs> uh, and then what are you guys doing? It's the Is next it morning. Morning? Okay. Yeah, the, am... the, the light in the center of the world has reignited itself after exactly eight hours. I'm sorry, 12 hours. Hmm. All right. There's a no. We must continue forward then. I'm ready. Uh, little one, I mean no offense to you, but given that he is roughly your size, do you mind if I take on the burden of the frog? Oh, I would appreciate that very much. No, I'll, I'll just scoop it up over one of my uh, <laughs> my manta wings to keep it into place. I hope he's Any, okay. If anybody finds a source of water, we should dump it in the bag, I guess. Do we have any, I guess, keep walking? Any further notion beyond that? Survival checks? <laughs> Continue to the green. <laughs> um, as you can, as there is no horizon because it goes upwards, I will not require you to make a survival check because you can literally see where you're going. Um, it's still very far off, but you can see it, so it's real hard to get lost. <laughs> so to um, our right is just a sheer, or to our left is just a sheer cliff face. Uh, I mean, uh, probably like a day and a half away, but yeah. But Okay, so it's just ocean to one side, sheer cliff to the other, and these yeah. freaky trees the rest of this mm-hmm. way. That are swaying in the, the the breeze. And the one you guys stripped yesterday has already regrown into a small, like, bond size tree size. Well, at least we want to feel guilty about starting fires then. Wait, the bark itself grew into a new tree, or the tree that we desecrated... Well, you guys took enough of its bark that it retracted into the ground, and this morning there's like a little okay, tiny got it. bonsai size got tree it. there. Understood. I'd rather not be here any longer if none of you object. I'm still ready. A couple Good hours morning. into your second day of no food and no water, uh, you um, see something in the distance, uh, a kind of white box uh, with these that you can't really identify. I approach the box. Uh, it takes you yet uh, probably like another like 30 minutes to get within uh, side of it. And to explain to the players what you see, uh, you see a uh, single use Winnebago um, kind of shining in the sun, uh, a giant dragon. Uh, uh, painted along the side of it that says uh, Dungeon Master underneath it with a uh, dodecahedral um, gemstone in the center of it. What Nerd color alert. is the dragon? Huh? What color is the dragon? It's a red dragon, of course. Okay. Um, I'll sling the laser rifle into a readying position. Oh, it's clearly a painting of a dragon. Oh, that's okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> be careful as we approach it. Uh, they may, I don't know what this casing is, but whoever's inside might be a worshiper. Alex or Scott, whatever name you want to use for the character, that's fine either way. Uh, you uh, have been inside drinking bottles of water and hiding, um, re-watching all of uh, 
uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer on DVD. Um, awesome. When you hear uh, some voices from the outside. I, uh, I uh, scoot some of my leftover pee bottles to the side and I um, crawl the up Winnebago to the window. Has, the Winnebago has a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I've been using the bottles. Um, <laughs> he, he, he crawls out of the window and he kind of just, he's a little hoodie up and he kind of peeks out the window and he's like looking around his little eyes trying to see what I'm hearing. Uh, do you guys want to describe your characters to Scott? <laughs> um, uh, Fulin is a uh, roughly six foot two, uh, I think. Um, basically what looks like some combination between a manta ray and a elf. Uh, so bald head with the pointed ears, uh, this pale turquoisey blue skin coming down into these red and deep, deeper blue markings that go across his shoulders and chest and follow out into manta ray wings that are uh, folded underneath his arms on either side, um, continuing down that deep blue, just darkening and darkening until it gets to his feet. Oh, you forgot your lobster claws. And, oh, I, yeah, from the elbows, there are large uh, lobster claws hanging off that appear to be limp. I forgot what color I was. Uh, you're a Gila monster. Oh, that's right. So I'm like a giant lizard, or I'm like an eight, seven foot tall lizard man? Seven foot six inches, I believe. Yeah. Um, lizard man with like Gila monster markings, so like that orange and black and gray. Um, and like frills. And they're all wearing orange jumps, uh, orange jumpsuits, like they just got out of prison. I am a black winged kobold. Awesome, awesome. Uh, does my Winnebago have blinds on the window? Like little yeah. tiny blinds? Like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the blinds so they close a little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna sink down, I'm gonna open up my, uh, monster manual, I'm gonna start flipping through pages. Uh, I uh, will the only bet. one you could find is a kobold. But. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, there's a kobold. Wait, they don't have wings. What is this place? Uh, <laughs> I will call out, uh, Dragon Cultist, reveal yourself or we will do it for you. Oh, oh, God. oh God. Are they talking to me? Oh, oh. I turn the blinds, to this, like, open the window a little bit. Are you talking to me? I pick my, pick my head back inside the van. Unless there is another dragon cultist in the area, yes. Well, there aren't any dragon cultists here. I'm going to look down at the cobalt. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have experience with dragon cultists? Are they devious like this? Yeah. I don't know. Are you a dungeon master? What dungeons have you mastered? Wait, you you know about dungeon masters? And all of a sudden, I open the door to the Winnebago and I jump out. You know, you know, you know. Thank God, someone knows about. It and I run up to you. You're you're so, cobalt, I think, right? And you know about dungeon masters? I am. So a human man in a uh, <laughs> dirty hoodie uh, and his boxer shorts, because I can't see him putting on pants. No, no, not at all. I'm excited to see someone that can actually talk for the first time. Are we... Where are we from? Oh, you... You're from Eberron. Um, uh, Helena is from Faerun, and Coulter is from Ravnica. But do we remember that? No, right? You have generic memories. Like, you know what a human is. You know, like, a, if you saw a dwarf, you know what that was. Like, you know what a fork is, stuff like that, but you don't have memories, per se. And we, like, know about the place we're from. Okay. Kind of. Like, you like you have what would could be considered generic knowledge from the world you came from. Like, if you, like, if Hank saw, like, a shower, he would know how to use a shower. Um, but, like, not necessarily what it was, per se, or if he's ever used one before, but he would know, like, inherently how to use it. Do we, like, when I remember what the political climate between my people and humans is on Eberron, like, would I be scared of him or hostile uh, I don't, him? I don't know if you would remember, and also you weren't raised among lizard folk, so I don't know, you know what I mean? So I, I haven't hammered out. 
Yeah, because you were thrown out because you're a dragon mark. That's right. That's right. That's right. So you um, weren't raised amongst lizard folk, so. I will. Yeah, I'm going to keep the rifle pointed. Unhand <laughs> <I> ta- the kobold. <laughs> I take his little face in my hands, though, and I go, oh, you poor thing. Have you been all alone for a long time? And now I look utterly confused. Uh, little thing? You're smaller than I am. And then I see the gun, and I jump behind the kobold and kind of move her in front of me. <laughs> Why are you pointing the gun at me? <laughs> he's scared, Belen. He doesn't know what he's doing. As long as you're not hurt, and he hasn't attempted to hurt you, then that's fine. And I'll... <laughs> I'll kind of stop pointing the gun, but keep it in a, a defensive. Oh, oh, thank God. Thank what God. is this what? strange metal box you live in? Uh, My... Hank, with your superior lizard folk smell, you get the distinct odor of pizza rolls that just came out of the microwave. <laughs> um, um, I'm going to be sniffing all up on him. <laughs> Does he, like, he, he smells like that, or I'm He's, smelling him from no, the No, it's coming from the Winnebago. Like, they, they oh. just finished in the microwave, and you can smell Cool, them. I'm going to wherever he came out of. If the door's open, I'm going inside. If it's not, then I'm sniffing at the door. So the Winnebago kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> this giant lizard man crawls his way into your Winnebago. Uh, what does that smell? Whiff of tea in bottles and several foodstuffs. <laughs> <laughs> this place it, there's so many smells in here <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing get out of my van it's, it's a van by the way I point back to you and it's a, it's a, it's a van. vehicle wait hmm. uh, self propelled yes it has an engine and it drives well it doesn't drive right now but <laughs> Wait, it doesn't drive right. I'm sling it over. Well, what is there something wrong with it? Can we make it drive? My, I, I'm pretty sure my fuel's about to run out. It's been like been using the generator to keep away from those things. I've been wandering out out here, and and nothing talks to me. They just want to kill me, so I just stay in the van, eat my pizza rolls, watch some Buffy. What is you have? What is Buffy? Food? Yeah, I have food. But oh, Buffy! Buffy and, and he goes into this long explanation about what Buffy is. He'll start with season one, start reciting the script, uh, like word for word, as he's going down. Uh, I'm going to walk towards the van, announcing, "All right, we must immediately ration the food and figure out how who gets what shares." Hey, 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 hey! hey. This is my food. You can't go near my food. Get away from my food. I run over my van. Start, <laughs> take my backpack and start stuffing like my whatever candy bars and stuff I have left, and it's just like <laughs> you can't come in here and steal all my food, sir. We have not eaten in two days. We have a dying frog in the bag. Oh, do you, do, you, do you have water anywhere? Why don't you eat the frog then? If it's frogs, dying. Frogs are friends, not food. He's a sentient being. Oh, 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 not, not a, not a, not an animal frog. I'll, I'll open the bag to the snoring oh. uh, kind inside. I'm going to stand up as tall as I can and say, who are you calling an animal? I wouldn't touch him. Uh, uh, no one? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you can, you, I'll tell you what. You guys can have food if you take me with you. And I immediately, after I say that, before you even respond, I see something blinking and go examine it. <laughs> what do you see blinking? I don't know. Anything in the trailer, in the van that's blinking. Something, the microwave, something's going to be blinking somewhere. The microwave is flashing done and beeping every few minutes. I'm poking it and sm- whatever. Uh, you poke the, the little indent part that makes the door pop open <laughs> and are ass- uh, assaulted by pizza rolly goodness. <laughs> Oh, that does smell oh. very nice. I'm going to grab the first bottle of liquid by the door. Um, and It seems to be apple juice. 
Uh, I'm going to open it and smell it. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> pee. <laughs> All right, that's potable enough for these purposes and pour it over the frog. <laughs> oh. Jake, I'm sorry. Yeah. Wherever you are, <laughs> sorry. I got to say something, but it's already too late. I'm so, uh, okay. There that is a shower that you could put him in. <laughs> uh, it is... <laughs> I don't know that. We well, don't know that. Yeah. You guys, if you if, if you need those yellow bottles, you can take as many as you want. And if he needs that, that's fine. He just he needs water, and this was. I, I, oh oh oh, water! I got a I got a I got a shower in the van. I'm gonna put the entire backpack in it, and then I think that based on my history, I'm smart enough to be able to turn that on. So I'll go ahead and turn on the nozzles and just kind of leave him in the shower. <laughs> I start... There's also water bottles as well, so. Yeah, I mean, drink, drink water. I'm going to take one of the water bottles and drink it. <laughs> yeah, I start gathering <laughs> bottles of water and, and I pick up a bag or <laughs> try to make a blanket into a satchel. <laughs> uh, so, fantastic uh, way to store it, squishy. It's sticky. Called plastic. You find several. <laughs> you find several tomes, uh, uh, seemingly in a series uh, called uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, uh, and there's Dungeons. several of them. <laughs> oh, these are the dungeons that you've mastered. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes, they are. And I, I go over to the monster manual. I flip open. I scroll away over to the cobalt real quick. I show <gasps> That's the cobalt. <laughs> I don't know about this CR rating. That seems low. <laughs> well, well, in, in in the game from my world, you guys are, are pretty weak. Okay, well, I'm going to pretend you didn't say that very rude thing to me. But thank you for showing me your book. I didn't. I didn't write the book. You you got to blame um, Wizards of the Coast because they literally uh, wrote you as a low CR. Wait, which which coast? I they never explained that. I don't know. All the coasts? No one ever asked. in Seattle. <laughs> so what's most important right now is that we are trying to get to the green space ahead. Do I know what they're talking about? Probably not because I haven't left my van. Uh, yeah, you haven't left the Winnebago, so <laughs> you're not really sure. I'll try um, your blind GPS on the other working, side. So. See, I'll try the blinds on the other side and see if you can see it from there. <laughs> you can. Oh, 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 yeah, that place. Yeah. Is my function at all right now, or is it kind of dying? The Winnebago? Yeah. Uh, I'd say you probably have like a half day's drive in you. Okay. Um, I, I guess if you guys want to pile in, I, I, I can drive you over there. Oh, fun. If you can pilot this craft, that'll save us a lot of time. Oh, yeah, I've been driving her for years. It's great. My name's Alex. What's yours? Uh, I'll <laughs> take out a clan uh, hand, causing the lobster claw to come forward. <laughs> uh, Bolin. Bolin, nice to meet you. And I shake your hand and watch the arm dangle as I shake it. <laughs> I'm Siggy. And Siggy. All right. And, and you with the pizza, all the pizza rolls in your mouth? <laughs> Um, past pizza rolls. My head is currently shoved in the microwave, trying to figure out why it's warm inside. <laughs> um, <laughs> and like door halfway closed. I'm Gorf. Gorf. He. He needs to know how things work. He, he, yeah, yeah. I, um, it's warm because of um, radio waves. Well, I'm gonna go with that. Oh, you shouldn't go into the ocean. It's very dangerous. There's tentacle creatures. How? Will it the cease working if we move away from box? the waves? You're, you're trapped in the microwave? No. How, you have waves. You have the ocean trapped in this box? No. Oh, no, no. R radio waves. It, never mind. It, 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 it's, it's magic. It produces heat with magic. Mm. In fact, this whole thing is run off magic. <gasps> can, it, 
make more of whatever he stuffed into his mouth while it's moving. Do I? Do oh, I you have, have a whole? You have a whole oh. freezer on the back of the Winnebago filled with oh. gold and, oh, and awesome. TV dinners and <laughs> anything a awesome. dozen master could need. There's Mountain oh, Dew. Back there. and there's Mountain Dew. <laughs> Mountain Dew. Awesome. <laughs> And you have a right. whole cabinet inside filled with Top Ramen, Doritos, and Funyuns. Wow. Excellent. Excellent. So, uh, all right, here's here's the food you can ration. So you, you guys are going to protect me, right? I'll, I'll take you up there. I'm going to give you food. You protect me, right? Because I'm the only human I've seen since I've been here. <laughs> and it's not looking good for me. <laughs> here. Yes. Our, if you're going to share that with us, and I'll... Um, I'll take the, the laser pistol that we were using for uh, for Kitan and uh, hand it over. Uh, do you know how it works? I, it, does it look like a gun with a trigger? Um, yeah, sure. I've played enough video games, too. I point it outside and I pull the trigger once. Uh, a destructive bolt of energy shoots forth from it and leaving a small crater. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, cool. That's definitely a deal. <laughs> and I put the, I strap it on myself. I think it's a handgun, but yeah. Oh, okay. I put it somewhere. <laughs> you put it in my backpack. Pocket. Yeah, my hoodie pocket. There you go. <laughs> All the ghetto dungeon masters. <laughs> I got four pistols and two rifles. So I'll give you two of those if you want to. If you want a second one, just in case. Dual wield. Excellent. <laughs> To put them both in my hoodie pockets. Uh, <laughs> Discerningly so, start opening the bags and smelling each of them, trying to figure out which ones. <laughs> I'll go and get more pizza really rolls. And... You just get a lot of salt. <laughs> I mean, like, that's mostly what you get off of them. <laughs> I understand the water now. <laughs> I'll go get more food, load it up, start doing it, hand everybody a bottle of Mountain Dew. Um, Plug in my heated heated blanket and give it to the give it to Korth, and then I'll uh, go and start uh, make sure everybody's in. And I'll tell them, all right, I'll I'll start driving up there if you guys. I got about a half days in this, maybe I'm getting low on fuel. It's better than what we had otherwise. And after it runs out, the car the van's not really going to do much after that. You said it's magic. Can it be recharged or? If we can find the correct magic to put back into it. Hmm. But I don't think there's a gas station anywhere around this place. Well, um, we will keep an eye out for a gas station. But for now, I'd like to get as far as we can before nightfall. All right, everybody's in. I close the door. Now, whoever wants to ride shotgun can ride shotgun up here, and then I'll uh, turn the key on and blare some like '90s music, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just start driving towards the green patch. I immediately stick my head out the window. <laughs> I'll lean over to uh, to Korth. <laughs> Does this look like radioactive medical runoff to you, or is that just me? <laughs> I have no idea. Korth is in to a second bottle of Mountain Dew. It's delicious. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It uh, does not taste God. at all like Mountain Dew, though. Like the Dew no. of the Mountain. No, never. never. <laughs> Yeah, well, we're just going to set that aside and keep on the water. <laughs> the the trust water at home is much, much more acidic. I'll uh, I'll see how you look <laughs> in a few hours before I give it a try. I find the bubbles troubling. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you're drinking too fast. It tickles if it comes out your nose. <laughs> uh, Chetan from the shower shoots his tongue out, grabs a couple bags of chips, and then they just slide into the bathroom. Oh, he's feeling better. <laughs> Hit the road. <laughs> uh, after some time, just because it's a completely flat, just empty 
the wasteland. So, you, I mean, it's bumpy, but beyond that, it's not, you know, difficult to drive along. Um, uh, about, we'll say six hours later, uh, the car starts to shake pretty badly. All right, guys, I think we're coming to the end. <laughs> Is this not supposed to happen? Uh, no, no, it means we're running out of the magic, the powers, this thing, the fuel. And mm. going to, do we need to bail? No, no, it'll, it'll, I'm just going to stop it here so I don't completely run the gas out of it. So I just kind of pull over slightly, put it into park, put the emergency brake on, turn it off. That's it, guys. That's as far as I can take you in this. Do we have any sense of how long this, the lit has been la- lit? light has been lit <laughs> um you probably have another like four or five hours of light going uh based on the small amount of research you've been able to do okay. with the car going faster than walking how much closer are we to the green uh you you've gotten significantly closer um he didn't drive super fast because he's not used to driving without roads but you i mean you probably cut your half time in half so you're probably like a day out at this point should we try to go to the water again in this area maybe it's safer you can see if it's salinated and whether we should refill our uh, supplies here well uh, are we all going or it's up to you i can go by myself I, but I can't no stay here should. if you need me to protect you, and we can all go together. No one should go by themselves anywhere, I think, here. Never split the party. Never. Don't ever split the party. If we're going to go places, we go together. It's one thing I, I've learned playing Dungeons & Dragons for a long time, don't split the party. I don't know how we fun I would call this, but uh, yes, do not... St- I agree. I agree. You're supposed to share. Will we be coming back? To the encasement? Yes. Maybe we should spend tonight in there. I mean, it's uh, better than spending it outside. That's certain. It, it's kept me safe so far. Like nothing's really tried to pry its way in. Thank God. So, upon hearing that, Korth takes all of the bottles of Mountain Dew that he had put inside of his suit and starts placing them back on whatever stuff they came from. <laughs> Thinking that he was going to have to stock, stock up. <laughs> that's, that's He's good addicted news. already. Oh, boy. How, how far are we from the water now? Uh, you guys stayed pretty close to the coastline, so like maybe 10 minutes. Okay, so we should be able to get to the water and get back before it's dark and rest here for the night. Does that seem fair to all of you? Do you guys want me to stay with your frog friend and keep him safe? I got guns oh, now. Uh, Chetan uh, comes out rubbing a towel on his skin. Goes, uh, don't use this towel ever again. Um, it's poisonous now. And he kind of just drops it on the ground. <laughs> oh, that was my last clean towel. Yeah, there's a lot of dirty towels in there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Chetan- yeah. <laughs> We're completely dejected. Could you put that outside so that no mistakes are made, perhaps? Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Uh, here. And he kind of like just drops it outside the door. <laughs> okay. I pick it up and drape it over a weird tree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are we ready? Uh, so, far, how far is the water from here? Like ten minutes. Ten minute walk. Ten minutes. Okay. But now, Alex, you do jog, so you're up to the task yeah. of this. But you should probably oh. put on pants, bud. Oh yeah, I've been driving this whole time in my boxers. Yeah, let me let me, let me put the pants on. I throw on my pants, and um, I actually grab my backpack and I throw just in case. I throw throw my stuff in it. Um, throw a couple water bottles and a little bit of food and zip it up and put it on my back. Are you taking any of your tomes? 
Oh yeah, yeah, they're all in there. All of them. Gonna, the entire D D five E. No, 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 no. Just the just the monster manuals. Okay. <laughs> just you never know when these will come in handy. I've already discovered someone in them, so I'll follow suit and put some food and water in a bag. <laughs> You know, I'm just saying. I'm just saying minutes. it's ten minutes, but God knows what's gonna happen in the van before we come back. Prepared, Mrs. Key. I've been that DM before. Upon so. hearing that, then Korth is gonna take a, a bottle and slip it down his. Stomach. <laughs> At least one. Gotta have one. Surreptitiously. There's a two liter. Do you want the two liter instead? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Uh, so you guys uh, start to approach the ocean um, uh, again, and you're able to get to the beach without seeing anything this time. Oh, there's nothing on the horizon or whatever, that thing? You don't see anything. So I, I walk slowly out towards the water until I touch it, unless I see anything. You don't. I fill up a bottle with, with some of that water. What does it smell like? Can I tell if it's, well, I'll taste it. It smells something. like, it's, it tastes like ocean water. Yeah. Okay. It's definitely salinated. Okay. I come back to the group, I tell them that. Um, I mean, do we know what to do to get water desalinated, right? Like, we know we can boil it. Like I, mean, it. I don't know how to do that. Maybe. <laughs> I, mean, I would say survival check on that. With an intelligence of 18? I would still require either a nature or survival check. All right, I'll do a nature. I'm a little bit, I can, can I assist since I saw uh, an episode of Survivor one time uh, because Buffy didn't come on and so I was flipping through and happened to you Only know. if it's Bear Grylls. The Survivor doesn't teach you that kind of Bear stuff. Grylls. Sure, Bear Grylls. So is that advantage or...? Yeah, you can have advantage on it, yeah. Okay. I think it's done this way. <laughs> that is... Uh, okay, I'm a, I believe that my nature is a plus four. I believe so, too. Okay, <laughs> so then that's a 21. That's good. Right. With a 21, you do know a process of uh, whatever Hank knows how to do that. Um, it would be it would be a long process. Though. Oh, um, hell yes. Yeah. No. And also, you know, that Alex, in fact, doesn't know how to do it for sure. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> So we can, if nothing else, save some of the water for uh, our froggy friend. So let's just make sure to keep the salt ones marked from the other ones. Do they get yeah. perception checks from everybody? Yes. And everyone hope and pray that Alex isn't the one who gets it. <laughs> it's um, what? Wait, what is perception you said? Yeah. Oh, that was a uh, uh, 17. So... I think I have a plus three for wisdom, so that it's a twenty. Sixteen, sir. And you have your numbers, Alex. So that's your final number, right? Yeah, I, I just, I'm just using the sheet. So I think I have a plus three to perception. Uh, yes, you do. Okay, then I got a nineteen. Thirty twenty. Thirty twenty. bunch. <laughs> Um, so those of you who got over 15, which I think was all of you, uh, you see in the distance something metallic and kind of shiny uh, surveying the coast in a search pattern going back and forth. We should get back to the van immediately. Do you think it's one of those tentacle things? I don't want to take the risk of it being that... It's in the air, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with going back to the van, too. Back to the van, guys. Back, back. Okay. Van. 
Uh, so for all of you who escaped from the ship, you feel a pain in the back of your neck and a strange sensation as something seems to crawl under your skin. Oh, oh no, no, no. Well, why is everybody freaking out? Uh, I mean, I'm going to start running towards the van and trying to hit wherever it is that I can feel something moving. <laughs> uh, whenever you touch it, there's definitely something r- wriggling. Under <gasps> I'm just going to hit it hard. I'm going to hit it as hard as I can. <laughs> I start clawing at it. Without harming yourself, there's no way to get at it. And if you pierce your skin, you feel it slide down your back. <sighs> Wait, wait. Oh, That's God. Disturbing. Let me look at yours. Maybe I can help. And then you can get mine out. Wait. Uh, I will. <laughs> can, we, can we do it at the van? <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> uh, as soon as we're at the van, I will, like, drop my pack and uh, unzip as, the jumpsuit and pull it as down. As you approach the van, sitting on the hood of it, which is still warm from the engine, you see a calico cat uh, curled up on it. Um, uh, uh, it's, not, it's not my cat. I say I'm kneeling now, shirtless, basically with my jumpsuit still around my legs. <laughs> okay. Where do you obviously, feel it? Where do you feel it? Obviously, I'm no one's cat. And if you're concerned about the things in your neck, you should be. Wait, you guys have things in your neck? Do you know how to get them out? I do not, but the sparrows do. Okay, well, where are the sparrows, talking cat thing? Oh, the spirit would. Uh, They reside. Where is the spirit wood? I believe your destination has always been in mind. So if we can, I'll just turn back to the group. If we can get there, they can get these fucking things out. But I the Niyoki will find you long before you reach it. Spiders. <gasps> so, what do we do? In ancient times, to reach the spirit wood, one would take the deep well in the dwarven kingdom. The what in the what in the where? I don't repeat myself. I don't know how much time we have for riddles, and I mean no rudeness towards you, but would you mind directing us to a deep well? To the deep well? Hmm. What's in it for me? Human, do you have any tuna? Chicken of the sea in a tiny metal thing that you could open with a can opener? I, I, I don't have it in a can, but I got some pouches. Very well. But could you make a sound like you're opening it with an electric can opener? Oh, miss it. okay. No, oh, okay. And I'll go rummage. <laughs> what the hell? This is a dream anyway. So I just go to the main van and I throw open the door and I, and I start. <laughs> the cat, as soon as he hears the noise, jumps down and then goes and, and starts weaving in between your legs and uh, letting out some very uncharacteristic meow, meow. Oh, such a good boy! I do the pet his back when he lets me. <laughs> and I put it on a little like paper plate I have and put it on the ground. Oh, delicious. And he spends some time noisily eating that. So Balin's looking back at the ship, trying to keep an eye on how close <laughs> it's going to get. Oh, very well. Uh, for doing a, f- a favor for me, a guardian, I shall give you directions to the nearest dwarven outpost. Excellent. Okay. All right. I will. Oh, would you like that now? Oh, yes, very much so. And I would, I'll flip open my um, Dungeon Master journal and take out my pencil and write down anything that he says. Go three hours east and enter the gates of friendliness. You'll need this. And the cat kind of uh, uh, produces from seemingly nowhere a small rectangular plastic card um, to enter. 
Once you do, head uh, downstairs and you will eventually come to a chasm with a bridge. Be careful, cross the bridge and you shall find a deep well within the mountainside. Th thank you. Alex, you recognize the card as a Costco card. <laughs> what? I'm just staring at... Did, did you just hand me a Costco card, Cat? Yeah, plat platinum membership. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have other things to attend to this day. Okay. He kind of just jumps out of the Winnebago and starts trotting into the wilderness. Um, Bye, Cat. <laughs> gather the food and let's go. How is that cat surviving in this place? Hmm. Okay, I'm ready. Knowledge. That's how. <laughs> Starts stuffing bags. <sighs> so you guys load up as much your, as I can. Uh, so you stuff your bag with what could be considered rations. Um, do you guys take any of the frozen stuff or do you leave it? I wouldn't know. Um, yeah, I wouldn't know any better either. Oh man, all this food's gonna go bad. Dang it. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Can't take it with us. Well, can we just eat that first if it's gonna go bad? Do you have to, like, you have to. Cook it in the microwave. I'll take a oh, frozen magic, one out the magic and box. pop it in my mouth. <laughs> uh, it is an ice cube. <laughs> I think if you, if you shock it for a while, it'll warm up. <laughs> oh. can we All right, you can magic... take it if you want. <laughs> Maybe we can take the magic box with us. The microwave. It, it it won't run without the van. Hmm. Without the power. Well, we we could take it and start a fire inside of it. What? It it would just melt. What do you mean? You said it was a magic box for heating things. Why wouldn't it's it? It's gonna melt hold fire. Just a fire. It doesn't Entirely use useful. fire to cook. It uses it uses magic to cook. If you put fire in this box, it's gonna melt the box. No, magic items aren't damaged by fire. It's well, not magic. It's technology. Does that help? No, well, that would have been um, easier to say from the beginning. Yeah, at this point, now that you've said that, I'm back in the microwave with my head inside of it. <laughs> Again. <laughs> How close you is said this ship? was magic, you didn't say it was technology. <laughs> How close is the ship? Uh, it's still in a search pattern. It seems to be going up and down the coast. And you guys, like, ten minutes from the coast. So if you were to leave heading um, west, like the cat said, uh, I don't know, eat, you know, west, I'm sorry, towards the mountains, yeah. you would be moving away from where they're searching. Korth, I don't think we have time for that, but if you just want to take it out, we can walk and you can take it apart while we go. Mm. Fine. I'm going to grab it, look at it, weigh it in my hands, and then say, uh, someday, and put it back. Maybe we can come back for this metal box. Yes, please. <laughs> All right, I'll lock it up before we go. Should keep people, some things out of it. Those creepy <laughs> space spiders, though, they probably would take this. What? Wait, creepy space spiders? No one told me about creepy space spiders. That's what's trying to find us. Look in your books for Niyoki. Start looking through my books for Niyoki. <laughs> Unfortunately, you have a fifth edition book, and they are not in it. I cannot find them in this book. They must oh, be new. They're creepy. <laughs> walk and scroll, and I'm starting to usher them out <laughs> or away from I'm the walking, I'm walking. <laughs> Chetan comes out of the shower, uh, dripping wet, and then joins the rest of you. Alex, how did you come to be in this place? I don't think you were on the ship with us. <laughs> no, I, I was driving in the desert, and then all of a sudden I just appeared here i don't know so you never saw the creepy mind spiders 
No, no, I don't want to see mine spiders. Yes. No, Me neither. Not. So perhaps some sort of portal. But you have all your memories. I'm, I'm assuming that, I mean, this is a dream, so I have all my memories. This is a dream? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my, yeah, I'm, I'm asleep at home. I'm asleep at home. I must have, I must have uh, drank too much Mountain Dew and passed out watching some sci-fi flick on, you know, TV. It's, it's, it's a dream. There's no way this is not a dream. You're all just happy. part of my dream. I'm happy that you're astral projecting, but I think the rest of us have corporeal problems. I hate this dream. Kind of a shitty dream. This doesn't <laughs> feel like a dream yeah. at all. It is a very it's crappy dream. Three times. <laughs> so you guys head east? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, quickly. <laughs> or west. West, west, west. west, west. The towards the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys head east? Delicious. And there goes Calder back towards the thing. <laughs> back into the water. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm really bad at east and west. I have to remember east and west by the middle east is that way, and then the western world is this way. That's how I always have to remember it. <laughs> I, just, I just remember where the western east coasts are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be I handier. go never eat soggy waffles. <laughs> I do it every fucking time. <laughs> Mine's sour wheat. Oh, nice. I mean, I'm not planning on eating either. Um, <laughs> Sam. Uh, eventually, you guys start to see a large building in the distance. Um, uh, unlike any you've seen, it's uh, almost completely rectangular um, uh, with a giant kind of black stone uh, field in front of it with strange white lines in a geometric pattern. Well, hopefully this is a good sign. <sighs> oh, the card will work here. Uh, on the side of the building, it, it reads in large, common, uh, Costco. That matches your card, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, of course. It's my dream. Why wouldn't I dream about a Costco? It's where I can get all my food from. We need more food. It's probably in there. Is this That's some kind of large market? market? Oh, it's like a giant, giant, giant market. They have like bulk everything. Approach the Costco. Uh, as you uh, approach the glass uh, doors, um, standing in front of it is a large iron creature with red menacing eyes and a uh, great sword the size of a light pole in one hand. <laughs> uh, just as we were walking up to, I was explaining to everybody what the lines were, like other boxes like mine parked there and like people go visit the store and just to make idle chit chat as we're moving forward. It's a shame there's no more of those boxes here. Maybe it's a completely empty faster. parking lot, right? Yeah. Rio? Okay. Um, I quickly oh. hold up my Costco card to the. <laughs> the uh, creature reaches down, Hello. takes your card, puts it up to its face, hands it back to you, and says, Welcome, Platinum member. And then... Oh, the cat wasn't right. <laughs> the cat wasn't wrong. I am a Platinum member. Score! Extra points! <laughs> Thank you, sir. Have a good day. You as well. <laughs> um, Korth goes up to it and looks and sees if he can figure anything out about it. <laughs> Korth. It's definitely a golem. <laughs> I smell it. Uh, it smells of uh, kind of fresh forged metal and magic. Hmm. Are there more of these inside? We go he's inside. You, Alex. Oh. oh, he's asking me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, no, they don't have these in my world, in, in my real world, not in my dream. Apparently, I'm just putting it here because my dream. No, that I'm, no. This is a Costco greeter. 
they're, they're just here to make sure we have our membership before we go in. Okay. As we usually, it's another human. How would they keep anybody out? Well, it's only well, because, other humans. Because in my know. world, in my real world, we're all human. That there are no, but there are another races. We're just all human. I, I start okay. laughing hysterically. That sounds boring. How would, you get anything, me. how would you get anything accomplished? Do you at least get surgical enhancements? No, we, we, we can, we, we can, you know, we have, we have LASIK surgery. And, you know, they're growing ears on rats and stuff now, so. That's not very useful but on a rat. rats now, already it? grow ears. No, human ears. They're, it's like, <gasps> it's a rat with a human ear on the back. Do you want the rat to hear better? Is that what they're no, talking? no, we're trying to do. We're trying to perfect cloning, from what I understand. You haven't perfected. Oh God, what backwards kind of world do you live in? <laughs> can, <laughs> can, we go into the the, can we go into the Costco now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Inside of the Costco is a giant kind of like chasm. Um, uh, there's obviously where there would be registers and like store shelves, but, but there's a sinkhole in the center where most of that has collapsed into um along the walls and ceilings you do see these kind of black blobs that are kind of like suctioning their way up and down the walls but they don't seem to take any notice of you are there any other living beings just the little black blobs that are kind of moseying their way like snails along the walls and ceilings Ugh. oh this okay. isn't what i was hoping for so what are the blobs <laughs> Are you asking me or Alex? Alex. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm going to search through my monster manual <laughs> to see if I recognize these as any kind of ooze. Uh, they might be black puddings, but black puddings are very, uh, they attack people. And also these aren't the right shape. These are almost like little perfect domes of jelly. Yeah, I, I can't tell you. Maybe a type of ooze, but nothing in my book. Are there okay, any so... signs to indicate where this well is? No signs. Uh, there's several signs, but they all just kind of talk about what would be in those aisles. And then there's the giant sinkhole with an incline going into the earth. Didn't the cat I think that's the well. Bridge? <gasps> Did I went back through my notes real quick. So you have to go down the well and then it's a bridge? He said you will go to uh, the uh, place of friendliness and then you will go into the earth and come across a chasm. Oh, yeah, we got to go down there. Then we go across the chasm with a bridge. Okay. Okay. Now that's what the notes say. There's no other place to go down. Okay. That's Does anybody have a rope? Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, I can glide, but I don't think I can take more than probably Siggy, and she can already glide. Is there, is there any rope or anything left in the Costco that is possibly usable? Uh, there's a camping supplies section, as that was their seasonal. Oh, awesome. I'll go check the camping supply section. Uh, you find uh, uh, some nylon rope. Oh, awesome. I collect it up and pull it back over. Found rope, guys. Costco's yep. great for all of this stuff. They also had tents and camp stoves as well. Uh, if they're small enough, I will take those. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love I mean, a camp it's stove. a bit of a burden, but you can definitely fit it into. Uh, I mean, they're made to be taken camping. So, can we distribute this uh, amongst us, Alex? You do know you need to grab some of those little mini propane tanks, though, for the camp stoves. Oh yeah, yeah we need those. I'll, I'll carry whatever I can carry. All right. Backpacks. I'm going to take one of the propane canisters and keep it on myself, though. Yeah, if they have better backpacks, I'll get a better backpack, too. <laughs> they have several backpacks, like the big uh, camping ones. They even have one of those ones that's on the rails. So as you move, like, it goes up and down. The backpackers. I'm taking that yeah. one. That looks fun. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, we read for whatever we can as far as yeah. like, supplies. Oh, uh, there's a whole clothing section as well, jeans and t-shirts, if you guys want to get out of your stinky coveralls. Oh, I definitely want a new hoodie. <laughs> Are you sure? Mm -hmm. This hoodie you have is uh, limited edition. 
Dungeons and Dragons hoodie that was signed by Matt Mercer. Um, I'm going to put a hoodie over this one. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want the stink to escape as much anymore. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Is there is there any like is there any part of the health and beauty section left? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm gonna grab some Axe body spray then and hit myself with the Axe body spray. And uh, Alex goes from stinking to horribly stinking. <laughs> <laughs> I um, visibly start coughing. <laughs> uh, to yeah. all the reptilian members of the party, he just reeks now. <laughs> um, I want if are there any like knives anywhere? Uh, over in house goods, there's like plastic packages, but you cannot, for the life of you, figure out how to get into the knives itself, as you have no knife to open the packaging. But no, like. Can I use my claws? Knives. Oh yeah, you can use your claws, but for some reason, your claws can't seem to penetrate this horrible packaging. <laughs> shoot it! Shoot it! Um. Shoot the plastic! Wait, maybe my acid breath will burn it. And the plastic <laughs> that would work technically. <laughs> I just want like a survival knife or like even a kitchen knife or something like that. Uh, there's definitely survival knives in the camping section, yeah. Okay, also, you come across a 24 pack of Mountain Dew. <gasps> oh, I will load that up in the backpack, but this one is blue. <gasps> oh, oh, you've had a good one. Is it so much better? I'm sorry. Uh, Voltage? It's from Baja. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> Bel <laughs> Bel 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 ever. <laughs> they don't have any of the live wire. They don't have any of the live wire Mountain Dew, do they? I don't trust it. <laughs> oh god. I still don't no, trust they it. don't have any live wire. Oh. Okay. Rest in peace. I know. <laughs> uh, you also find toilet paper, Alex. Oh my god. Just. <laughs> <laughs> this is what camping backpacks are for. Do uh, I have a choice? Is it like soft? Is it like like uh, Charmin Ultra? They and like they got the nice. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a stuff in that in there. They even have wet ones if you want wet ones. Oh my god! You know I might grab a couple pallets. That's great. Yeah, yeah, you know, I might need that later. <laughs> Practical thing. Did you guys go into the chasm eventually? I mean, yeah, we can be here. Grabs we have it on us. <laughs> We load up with yes. whatever we think is necessary. Oh, yeah. Real quick, Rio, is there is there a um is the electronic section still around? Yeah. Okay. What's what's left in the electronic section? Uh, some TVs, stuff like that. What are you looking for? Is there any like any like is there like an i <laughs> is there like an iPad or iPads or anything left like that? Yeah, but they 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 weren't charged. Well, that's fine. I'll uh, I'll take um I'll take an iPad and and and, and uh, um an iPod or an iPhone and I go over and I hand and I hand them to uh Korth. Hey, hey, here's some technology. Since I know he likes technology. You can play it's lightweight and you can check it out later. <laughs> Thank you. Know, if this is your dream, Thank why you. won't they turn on? Are they supposed to be black like this? Am I supposed to know what my dreams mean all the time? No. People spend thousands of dollars trying to figure out what their dreams mean. Thousands of dollars? I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, you can continue the nonsense speak, and I suppose we can see what else needs to be done to move forward. Uh, Siggy, don't lose thousands of uh, dollars while we're trying. You can count on me to lose whatever that is that you said. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> uh, so Into the, the chasm! <laughs> the actual incline is, is relatively simple to, uh, it's like difficult terrain, but it's not sheer at all. So you can oh, okay. easily even, I mean, the rope helps, but it wasn't necessary to get down at this incline into the earth. And about uh, 30 minutes into that walk, you start to see light ahead. That's hopefully a good sign, as long as the cat isn't in cahoots with the things. Yes, it was odd for that cat to all of a sudden show up, tell us I some mean, cryptic things. <laughs> I mean, familiars can speak on a regular basis, so it could have been attached to something else. Mm -hmm. And it That's knew about the Niyogi. Which is not a good sign. 
I ate my last packet of cat food too, or tuna. Saving that I bet tuna. There was, I bet there was a lot of tuna in the Costco. You'd think the cat could just get the tuna from that place. He did have a platinum membership card. Oh, he did. Huh. So let's proceed uh, with caution. So it would be obvious to you, uh, Alex, that a cat wouldn't be able to use a Costco card. Huh? <laughs> this is my dream. The cat gave me a Costco card. It probably used a Costco card. Cat's <laughs> also fucking talking. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, no one would seem surprised by that part. <laughs> this <laughs> dream. Is so weird. I've I've met and worked with wizards before. <laughs> I'm not I'm not unfamiliar with familiars. So as you head towards the light, uh, thanks to the wonderful uh, art channel that I follow on Patreon, Moonlight Maps, we have this beautiful map of Ooh. a stone bridge along a chasm that goes deep into the earth and into mist. Yeah, that looks safe. <laughs> so this is where the cat said to be careful. So I assume we should move slowly. We're starting on the bottom rail? Yeah. Okay. So I suppose uh, Bolin will start stepping slowly out onto the bridge to try to test its weight. I'm adding tokens. This will perhaps be a good time for the uh, the rope if somebody wants to tie something onto these the stones on this side. Sure, I'll start tying it. I wouldn't trust my knots though. Once I start tying the rope off, <laughs> make a survival uh, check. See if you remember Boy Scout. All right. Yeah, I'm tying that rope real good. <laughs> he ties it up. I tie it up, wrap it around it three times. Uh, he ties the rope around the stalactite, gives it a tug to show how good it is, and it immediately comes undone. <laughs> Let's take two on that. Uh, I'll Maybe someone it. else should do this. I'll try it. I haven't rolled survival yet. Okay, so I have a 21, which is with a plus three from my wisdom. Yep. And okay, that's accurate? Cool. Mm -hmm. um, okay, yeah, so I'll tie it onto the... <laughs> <laughs> he does some, like, Houdini shit, Alex, as he attaches the rope to the rock and then tugs on it and shows you how it's not supposed to come undone when you tug on it. Oh, feels like the real world. It's uh, similar to how I remember <laughs> tendons coming together when you actually have to attach um, pieces. I'm just going to blankly stare at you. <laughs> uh, should we do a cord between each of us then? Hmm. Or, I mean, one at a time and throw the rope back? I'm... I'm Well, if what you could do is you could go. One of you could go over, right? You, you one of you go over to test the strength, and then when you get over there, tie the end of the rope off at the other side, and then we can use it to go across. That way, class, we can just grab on the rope. Okay, I mean, Siggy, you're the lightest. If can everyone make okay. an insight check, please? Oh, I'm sorry, not an insight. I'm trying to give you guys a charisma roll. Uh, make a charisma save. How's that? Okay. Uh, okay. 16 flat. 16 flat. Uh, so 17 for you. Oh, I'm sorry. I looked at I looked at Scott's 13 <laughs> flat. Sorry. <laughs> so 14 for you, Coulter. Korth? Uh, 19. So an 18 for you. What? <laughs> Ziggy? Got an 18. So that is going to be a 22 for you. And then if somebody wants to roll for Chetan, I'll give you guys his number. 17? 30, 20. 
because he's so cute. <laughs> so I take the rope across. And, um, uh, yeah. uh, what was the lowest roll? Did somebody, somebody got a 14, right? Me. Uh, Coulter, you feel something... Uh, you feel something kind of like mentally come to your attention, like a presence on your mind. Something's here. I don't know what that means, but something is here. Start looking around for something. Flying up from the mist of the cavern floor are eyeballs with bat wings um, uh. that seem to all be uh, zeroing in. And Coulter, you keep feeling almost like something is sending a signal to your brain and then bouncing off of it as if they're using psychic echolocation. Uh, I'm going to shoot at the closest one. <laughs> all right, that's initiative, guys. Oh. I'm just going to use the initiative tracker in roll 20 because I'm that okay. guy. I'll just roll here. <laughs> okay, I got a, uh, I got a 16, which was a plus three. Oops. So you should be minutes. able to add your own to the turn tracker okay, there cool. on the side. And that's all my initiative is, right? Oh, yeah. I got to tell you guys that. Uh, Valen, your initiative at a plus two. Chetan is at a minus one. Korth is at a plus two. Sigi is at a plus two. And Alex, you're at a minus one. I know. Yeah. Okay, my dex is lower than I thought it was. Okay. Who's getting it to say that fancy little initiative? Uh, you, you have to click token. on initiative in your character sheet. Oh, God, I forget you can do that. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, Siggy, what did you get? Five. And uh, can somebody roll for Chetan? Sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. Four. Okay, so he has a three. Hank, I'm going to make Chetan's token and character sheet visible for you. Cool. Because you usually volunteer to take extra characters, so. Gotcha. Yeah. So this is him telling you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Shown up. They're freaking eyeballs with bat wings. Good Lord. It's freaking bats. <laughs> it's freaking bats. Fucking love Halloween. <laughs> All right, descending. Uh, Bellin, it is your turn first. So you said you were shooting at one of the nearest bats. Yep. So I think this guy's the nearest one, and I am going to fire the laser rifle at it. Uh, <laughs> is that just going to be a straight dex roll? Uh, yes. You do not have proficiency in guns. Nine. Nine. You. Miss. Which is. The number and whether or not I hit him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't think I have anything else I can do. So I am going to step back to here so I can try and get a better aim at him for next time. <laughs> now it's the bat's turn. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. If only we had weapons. <laughs> Only we were amongst friends or sane people. I mean, we got knives. <laughs> Thank you for laughing at that. Sorry. <laughs> That's why we're oh. friends, Colter. It caught me. It caught me off guard. <laughs> we, do, we, we do all have our survival knives, so at least we have knives, if nothing else. Sorry, I'm having to count these out. Oh, I don't know if I have enough hit points to survive two attacks. All right, the only one who gets an attack off is uh, the one next to Alex. Does a four hit you? No, oh my God! 
<laughs> Thank God. <laughs> As it gets close to you, the eyeball opens up impossibly large and a barbed tongue shoots out trying to gain purchase on you. As I start screaming in terror, it's a nightmare! It's not a nightmare! <laughs> Korth, it's your turn. Okay. Korth, let's see. We are going to go to this guy here. And we're going to try a bite attack. Okie dokie. Um, and I think you could just click on bite on your character sheet if you would like to roll it. But. I know. Um, yeah. Yeah, why not? Oof. Why is it set to advantage? Oh, it's automatically that way. You just take the first number. I know, I hate that. <laughs> so an eight will not hit. Okay. Um, and that's, yeah, that's my turn. Okay. Okay, so, I'm sorry, my, my sheet is in the way, but you have to leave the sheet up to roll from it. If you want to roll from it, but you can, like, uh, resize it. Also, if you want, when you open your sheet, um, up in the top left corner, there's like two little boxes inside of another gray box next to your name. Oh. If you click that, it opens it into a new window. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess I run up right here and uh, attack this one to my right. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll bite it, I guess. <laughs> Bite it, and I'm gonna use my sheet. And I'm gonna click bite. Did it work? Yeah. yeah. Damn it, that's not great. <laughs> Fourteen does hit though. <laughs> so in the chat log on roll twenty, if you click bite now, it'll actually roll the damage for you as well. In the chat log. On roll twenty. Oh, so that we we're rolling two numbers. There you go. Gotcha. Cool. Uh, you. You kill and chomp that bat. I think Ew. It explodes into purple goo that tastes awful. Uh, are you trying to get it out of your system? I would be spitting it out, yeah. Okay, make a con save for me. <laughs> 13. What am plus I adding two. to that? Plus two? Oh, no, plus four, actually. Oh. So, I said 13, yeah, 17 then. Oh, right. wait, You're, yeah. You get most of it out of your, out of your mouth. Can I, I'm going to go ahead and just step up there. All right, I'm done. Chetan. Chetan is, let's see what can Chetan do. Hmm. He can touch them. Um, ying, 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 ying. <laughs> what's this poison spray? Is that a spell? Yeah, he has a spell. Um, sure. Um, ten feet creature can see within region. Um, yeah, let's go. Poison spray on that. That. Uh, I need to make a con save. Yes, sir. Uh, the con save was 13. Um, that passes. So nothing happens. And Chet, I think it's going to back up a little bit here. Alex, would you like to do something? Alex would like to disengage. <laughs> and withdraw, let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20, what's my speed, 30? 25. Yeah. <laughs> there, you there you go. I move 30 feet away. Disengage. That's all I can do. Belen. Belen. Okay. 
I don't remember if we discussed this last time, but how do I find out if I have a spell or not? Uh, you do not. I can tell you that. Okay, much. great. Uh, in that case, I'm going to... Um, Uh, uh, I'm going to try and fire the laser pistol at this one. Or the laser rifle. Okie dokie. <sighs> Which I assume is a disadvantage, or is they up in the air so it's not at melee range? <laughs> uh, the ones next to you would give you disadvantage. Okay, so that is a three then. That is... <laughs> Not enough. Okay. I don't have anything I can do on a bonus action. Um, shoot. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have anything I can do, so I'm just going to try and wait till next round. <laughs> Okie dokie. Uh, those are the bats. Okay, I gotta stop working on what I'm working on. Uh, there's one there, one there. Uh, who got pinged off of you, Coulter, right? Yeah. Ooh, so I should have moved <laughs> or hit that one. <laughs> one, two, three. <coughs> uh, let's see here. A, <laughs> uh, a, Nine, a two, and an eleven. Nope, none of them. And then one on Helena, which is a natural one, which will miss. Second one on Helena. Which was an eleven. Does eleven hit you, Helena? I highly doubt it. Um, I mean, I don't know. It does not. Okay. <laughs> um, am I supposed to know that already? What my AC? Is? Uh, if you had, if you had done a, uh, if you'd figured out your Dex mod, maybe. But. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, okay. So does that bring us back to Korth? Korth. Okay, Korth. Um, do 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 do. Um, all right, we're gonna run over here, and we're gonna bite at this one. Thanks, Korth. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mention it, please. Mm. Dang. Nineteen. You're rolling much better than me tonight. That's a four. 19 will definitely hit. That's four damage. Um, and yeah, cool. That's it. And Helena, I added the spells you were supposed to have to your spell sheet, just so you know, to your character sheet. Yeah. So if we have spells, they would be there? Uh, I know I have one spell that's not there. Yes. Yes. But I, you don't need to do that for me right now. I, I can keep doing this. Okay. Okay. Uh, that is your turn, Helena. How much damage did you do, Hank? Four. Helena didn't go. That's what I'm saying. It's your turn. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying that's your turn. Oh, like you're done. Okay. Anyway. Um, okay. So I'm going to come around here. I'll take the attack of opportunity. Okay. Uh, seven. Okay. That doesn't hit. Um, and then do dragon breath uh, at these two in front of me. Ooh. Oh, 15 foot line of acid. 2D6. Yes. I think they get a save. But... A 16 and a 5. The 16 will pass, but the 5 will not. Okay. But I believe they take half damage still. So, go back to core. Go to Dragon Breath. 
click it. Did it work? No. Can I? Uh, no, it? that one, it, you, you just have to do it manually. So it would be 2d6. Okay, okay. Six. Uh, so they both are dead as they you couldn't. stream acid at them. <laughs> Get that in your mouth. It's now Chetan's turn. Um, Chetan, oh, what's Chetan going to do? Gonna do boy. Can't. <laughs> this is just my luck. <laughs> All right, so I didn't mean to, I'm not doing, yeah, I'm going to do poison spray, why not? Why not? Um, make DC, a con save? Yeah, DC 10. Oh, I'm sorry, I got him, I'm moving, but. Okay, yeah, never mind. <laughs> um, I think since he's a small boy, he's gonna go. Uh, no, he's gonna he's gonna stay over here. Just, you know. All right, Alex. Are you going to take your action to wet yourself, or? No, I feel I feel reinvigorated. I pull my gun out and I move up, and I'm going to take aim. And I'm going to try to shoot this one. Okay. Uh, the fourteen. Fourteen will hit. All right. What's the damage on the gun? Uh, I believe it's two d six for the handguns from. I use the same stats as the ones from Coulter's game. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 2d6. 2d6? All right. <laughs> Three damage. Well, that one's dead. <laughs> Yay! I feel much better about myself now. <clears throat> this is my dream, yo. My dream. I can kill these things. Belen. You're muted. <laughs> I am going to sling the uh, sling the rifle back over my shoulder, grab the survival knife, and stab at it. Okay, you are proficient in knives, so oh, excellent. Oh. So that'll be oh. a twenty plus uh, plus two, so a twenty-two to hit it. You definitely hit. Excellent. And what is the damage on these knives? Is it a D4? just one D four? No. Two <laughs> plus Dex, so four. Or it is just yeah, stab up through it. You stab into it, and uh, you're not really sure how you get purchased on a thing that's flying in the air with a piercing weapon. Uh, I've never understood that about D and D, but uh, you stab into its fleshy eye meats, and it just kind of like bleeds onto your hand, and the bats are all dead. The I'm gonna bats. fling it off the knife <laughs> into the chasm. <laughs> Okay, so I am better with knives than with guns. Good to know. Do the um, bats smell particularly bad or anything? Uh, they smell very similarly to the tree. Um, mm. um, do I think that with my cunning artisan, do I think that I could utilize them for anything? They don't have bones or skin. Um, they're okay, they don't have skin. I thought that they did. No, because they're literally just eyeballs with wings coming out of them. Got it. They don't blink either. Okay. It's they have madness. Teeth. Do I think that I, I could use the teeth for anything? <laughs> um, you might be able to attach them to a stick, make an impromptu weapon. Yeah, and you need worth to it. find more monster bits. Not worth it. I can't boil them down and make an elixir or something. Uh, you could make a the tasty bone broth. Oh. Mm, wow. No dubious food. Tasty, tasty. Uh, I mean, that would be dubious. <laughs> um, I'm good. I don't understand what you're asking. I'm sorry. I was making a Breath of the Wild joke. Okay. Yeah, it, it would definitely be dubious like food. That's what I thought you were making. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so shall we try to cross before more of them come then? Yes, I hurry across with my little rope. I'm going to tie the other end. 
Wee. Okay. The cat said carefully. Just carefully. You only have 50 feet of rope. Keep that in mind. Oh, how long is the spritz? <laughs> well, shit. Can't do that. I get to the end of the rope and I go, oh, oh no, we don't have enough. <laughs> uh, we have more than one length of rope. We can tie them together. I come back. <laughs> <laughs> we tie I'll them together? Attempt, I'll attempt to tie another <laughs> rope to it then. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's averagely tied. <laughs> <laughs> I head back over. <laughs> do, 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 do. All right, so I tie this knot onto this boulder here. Okay. Make a survival check. Survival. <laughs> Survivalism. <laughs> we're, we're, we're Boy Scouts at this point. <laughs> like... 13 plus 5, 18. Hank's inner Boy Scout. And is refraining from saying anything. <laughs> he knows how much was come. your final roll? Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay, it's better tied than the one in the middle for sure. Who goes next? I'll go next. Okay, guys, come on. I'll go. Oh, they're sending the big boy first. That makes sense. Are you tied to the rope, or are you just using it as a guide? I'm using it as a guide. Okay. Mm. Do I need to make any rolls? Not yet. I'm just going to keep moving. You're going to tell me what to do? Yep. That's what I did. Okay. When I get to this crack, I'm going to move half speed. <laughs> All right. Stop there <gasps> and make a dex check as that part of the bridge suddenly collapses under your enormous weight. WTF. So, we said the Hold on. we said the lightest person followed by the heaviest person. <laughs> enormous. It's I'm only a hundred I'm only two hundred pounds. Yeah. Not enormous. <laughs> <laughs> um you're, 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 uh, you're, you're descended from a bronze dragon. You're just very heavy. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm a big boy. <laughs> All right. Or is it a copper? Oh, it was a copper dragon. Yeah. Oh, geez. yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. All right. So now what happens is uh, somebody roll me a D20. And you want it low because that number, the six that you just got, plus whatever you get has to hit under a 10 for that center knot to hold. Am I rolling it or someone else? I don't want to roll and kill you. I don't either. <laughs> what kind of roll is this? Is this just a straight up roll? Just a Scott should make it. Scott should make it. Thanks, yeah, man. Scott, kill somebody. Kill somebody. All right. Right. Kill, kill it right. helps at all. <laughs> just Copper a D20, has a lower right? atomic weight than bronze. So, like. <laughs> that should give him a bonus because he's <laughs> descended from Copper Dragon. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Did you roll an 18? An 18. All right. Uh, so that center knot does not hold, but Kalina's knot does. Um, and so you are now dangling from the far side of the chasm. Oh, but you are able to hold on to the rope. How much of the bridge is gone? Uh, about 20 feet in the center. Oh, no. Now we're, we split, that's for sure. We be How split. do I? So I try to help pull him up, but you're dangling from the rope so you can climb the rope, rappel using the rock face, and I'll help too pull the rope. Yeah, we're just doing athletics check. Okay. Who's doing And I'll give you advantage because she's helping. Oh, okay. But make us athletics check as well, Helena, to see if you can hold on to his weight. I think my athletics is a two. Yeah. Okay. All right, Helena, what's your roll? Seven plus five, five. probably. 
13. All right. So it takes some time, but you are able to get up onto the other side, of course. Fantastic. Uh, th thank, thank you. I'm like super embarrassed. Like, oh my God. Am I going to have a weight complex? <laughs> That's what I keep referencing. <laughs> I call across oh, the no. chasm. I'm really sorry about the rope. <laughs> oh no, I didn't catch that. I forgot. I forgot you were copper. Oh fuck. It's okay, <laughs> I guess. Now what do we do? <laughs> oh. So twenty feet across. Plus, I don't know that we'd want people to walk on it anymore, but. Should we go and look if there's another way? Well, you you can you can glide, right? So why don't you go out there and ladder into the rope and retie the knot? I can okay. glide, not fly. It always goes down. I don't who, know if you were who's the lightest? It's the frog lightest on yeah. this side. He, yeah. We should send the frog over to. You should. Th you guys should throw the rope to the frog. Chitin. Oh, oh, okay. And, and have him tie it back together. Um, that is probably the safest bet. Okay. So. Hold on. Um, sorry, what are we doing? Explain to me again. My brain just literally dropped everything. Uh, you guys are just trying to reattach the rope. Okay. Um, Kitan is going to go to the edge of, this is 20 feet, right? Yeah. Like wide. Okay. Kitan's going to go to the edge. Um, um, I think maybe, and with one rope attached. Or like he has to get across to get the other rope, right? Mm -hmm. From you guys. He's gonna standing long jump, twenty five feet. Oh wow! Across, and then grab the rope in his mouth and jump back. Ooh. Yay! Um, and then who has the best survival? I have a plus three. Okay. Can it's already proven I can't tie knots in my own dreams, so can Ken help like assist? Like give advantage. He can, but he's plus? not proficient, so it would not okay. give advantage. Okay. The only one in your party I believe who's proficient in survival is Sniggy. Okay. Um then never mind. I'll let you tie the rope. Shoot. Okay. Coulter. Coulter, will... this is a, a pretty rough cliffside on this side. So you mm -hmm. could technically make an athletics check and then glide across if you got enough height. Well, but that doesn't help the other parts of the group. No, I'm it doesn't, in... but I'm just saying for you. Okay. I'm invested in all <laughs> of our survival. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's a dick. Well, I'm just saying if you get everyone else live. across. <laughs> Got it. Okay. I'm saying if you get everyone else across, you could get across that way. Okay. I will. I'm trying to suggest so maybe going last. Oh, God. Yeah. No, that, I mean, I, I assumed I would anyway. Um, <laughs> I'm going to slowly. <laughs> he's an asshole, but he's like a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to walk. I'll walk half speed out to Kitan kind of trying to feel if anything is about to give as I go. And then I will take the it rope. It seems pretty solid except for that one spot that collapsed, so. Whew, okay, let's uh, let's give this another try. Okay. 18 to retie it. Uh, yeah, that's pretty solid now. Okay. Okay, and I will walk All right, carefully Alex. back. <laughs> yeah, I guess I have to go since somebody can jump over it. The other person can glide. <laughs> You're up, bud. Okay, I will. Just an athletics check. Those aren't hard. 
<laughs> okay. Maybe tie yourself to the rope? It's already tied. I will, uh... And so there's nothing there, right? It's just empty space? Yeah. Going down into just an abyss of nothing. <laughs> I'll, uh... I'll, like crawl across the rope hanging upside hanging you know upside down as i go i'll start i'll start myself actually on my back on the ground and start inching myself yeah, yeah just like this you do know oh, that. Yeah, like check. it's like don't look down don't look down don't look down athletics check kitty and I'm going to use uh, before the results are responded. I'm going to use a luck roll and point. A luck point, yep. And roll another twenty. Mm. Oh, good God! Does it work? That, that is an unluck roll. <laughs> Can you use another luck, luck point? point? <laughs> uh, no, it says you can spend one luck point. So I'm, I, I'm going to keep the seven. <laughs> and I get uh, two about you there. Able, you are able to actually get across with a seven because the knights, the knots are so well tied. It oh, thank God. It's much easier. Use the sheep bend instead of the square knot this time. <laughs> and then Chetan can just jump across. All right, Balan. Uh, so I have enough distance down that I can glide from here? You could climb up and then glide. Okay. So I will climb up and then glide across. To get all the way across, you have to climb 180 feet up into the air. So it takes oh. you some time, but... Okay. <laughs> I do it. Make an athletics check for me, just as a formality. It's an easy climb, though. You know, you say it's an easy climb. <laughs> I'm sure with that climber script that we, I'm sure with that climber script we picked up at Costco, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, that's good enough. Yeah, so I struggle my way back up to nearly the top, and then leap off and open my wings of manta ray, and Batman my way across <laughs> to the other side. Wow. I think the rope was probably a better choice. That seemed a little, um, I don't know, excessive on my part. Apologies for the frivolousness. And then keep moving forward. <laughs> you come across um, eventually. Uh, you kind of like, on the other side of this chasm, it keeps going deeper and deeper down that cliff face. And you eventually come to a, a set of giant stone doors uh, with dwarven runes all across it. Unfortunately, none of you speak dwarven, but... <laughs> Shit. Well, is there another... I mean, it seems like if it's a well, then this would be what they were <clears throat> talking about, right? Dream Boy, anything from you? Uh... <laughs> I... I open my player's handbook and I look at the Dwarvish runes that translate the letters. <laughs> <laughs> and I look at each letter and I just, did I pronounce it in English? It says uh, uh, Tomb of the Deep King, Keeper of the Faith, uh, 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 Chosen of the Deep One. I translate that in my book as I go and I just Reread it to you guys. Keeper of the Deep One. That doesn't sound. Wait, say that one more time. Uh, it says Tomb of the Deep King, uh, something, something, and then it says Chosen of the Deep One. Would that be a Well of Hope? It does not say anything about hope. Uh, do we see any other passages nearby? Is there a nope. second well? 
<laughs> this is where this chasm leads. There's no sense in going back. I think down is our only option. You could uh, climb the cliff face down into the mist that the eye bath came out of. I was going to do that if he fell, but <laughs> I was like, ah, crap, I'm going to have to dive off the side of the cliff. <laughs> the cat said cross the chasm, though. You did cross the chasm. So why would we go down into the mist? Well, I'm just saying your options are these doors or the mist. Push open the door. Uh, you push open the door, and there's a hiss as uh, air rushes into the tomb, um, and uh, it is very dark inside. I go in. I have dark vision. <laughs> um, you very quickly realize that this entrance hall is filled with skeletons. Oh no, there's a lot of skeletons in here. Did you say that? Mm -hmm. Out loud? I look back at the bridge and I look in the door of a door and this, this makes so much sense why this is my dream. Why Did you have that? a lot you guys, of because, because, no, no, I love Lord of the Rings. What? What's Lord of the Rings? Oh, oh it's... No. So, so, are those dwarfs? Are those dwarf skeletons in there? Um, you have to make a medicine check to be sure. Sixteen. Uh, sixteen plus three, nineteen. Yeah, uh, they're definitely dwarven skeletons. And whatever killed them, uh, killed them by crushing uh, parts of their body as if they were like wrapped and then crushed by something. Mm. It is dwarves, and they look like they were crushed to death. Well, that doesn't fit with the story. As I start pondering the story to myself. <laughs> Maybe it's the deep thing. Or the deep one. You mean like Cthulhu? I say, say out loud. There is in each room of, because uh, this is a pretty expansive uh, tomb that you're in, but every single room in it seems to have um, these uh, pools. So in the corners of the room, there are um, pools of water that you cannot see the bottom of in each room, like dotted throughout the rooms. Any of these could Deep be... ones, water. Yeah, there's something in that water, most likely. I'm going to go take a look at the water. Uh, it is pitch black and deep, uh, stagnant. This doesn't seem like enough of a well. Do we think that there's another... Each door? hole is only about four feet like uh, in diameter, so it's not super... Like They're not super... They're super deep, but they're not huge, you know. We have Is it just dead end here? No, there's 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 plenty of uh, area to explore. But just each one of the rooms that you come across filled with dead dwarves uh, also has these deep pools of water. I mean, we need to find an exit, so I'm going to keep trying to search for a way past so we can get to whatever this well of hope is. Eventually, you come across a large stone room uh, that is particularly bereft of any creatures, and uh, across the room is a stone throne covered in cobwebs. That's not a well either. Oh, I'd like to go examine the throne. Is there a light source at all? Uh, there are torches, but none of them are lit. I'm going to have to hold on to somebody as we're walking through then. I can't see. Do all three of us have dark vision? Yeah, everybody except for you and uh, Shetton has dark vision. I have dark vision? I thought you did. Do lizard folk not have dark vision? 
I don't know. It doesn't say my character sheet, but let me look it up. All right. Just Bellin and uh, Helena then. We light some of the torches for you guys. Yeah. Also, Alex, you were smart enough when you were in the camping supplies, you picked up a, uh, a solar powered camp torch. Like oh, nice. Like lanterns. Then I would have lit that. Yeah. Yeah, no dark vision. We got uh, a Alex camp makes torch. a lantern. Uh, Alex makes a lantern light up with no fire. He just holds it up. Mm-hmm. I'm leaning over to Siggy. So is he supposed to be like a wizard or something? <laughs> <laughs> it's much brighter, it's LED. <laughs> he says he mastered dungeons, but he doesn't seem very good at them. <laughs> I don't know anybody can really master dungeons. I mean, it's... Uh, and that's a big thing to claim. I can hear uh, you guys. <laughs> there's a large echoing sound as Chetan starts eating a bag of Doritos. <laughs> Chetan! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Eat the non-crunchy stuff. <laughs> it's all crunchy. The, the the hot pockets should be thawed. Have some of those. <laughs> They're still frozen um, in the middle. So I, that's the same way if you cook them or not. <laughs> <laughs> I guess approach the throne carefully. So of course, when you come across the throne, um, it is covered in cobwebs, but nothing out of the ordinary. From uh, and it's just a uh, black iron throne. Um, okay. Would you like to investigate closer on the throne? Yes, but not touching it. Okay, give me an investigation check. Okay. 21. Um, you find that the runes on the side of the throne uh, which you don't speak Dwarvish, but uh, um, some of them are able to be depressed. Oh, real. Yeah. Um, um, it looks like some of these, there's some buttons here or something. I'll um, go up and take a look. Um, you said so, it's, go ahead. You said it's in Dwarvish? Yeah. I'm going to do the same thing. Take my time and translate rune for rune. <laughs> um, so uh, it, it says willingness of Eld. Willingness of Eld? I'll repeat that to you guys. Uh, that mean anything of Eld? Yes. <sighs> and the letters can be pushed. Uh, well, how, wait, hang on. How is it spelled? Willingness of Eld? Okay, so there's no D's L. So there's no H. I was really hoping for a well of hope. Oh, um, is it like a word puzzle? Um, they look like they can be depressed, but they look like they can be shifted. No, they can just be pushed like buttons. Okay. Random boyfriend. Um, <laughs> can I go to the bathroom? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I have a oh, not him. at all. <laughs> <clears throat> also, is anyone hearing that screeching sound? <laughs> Just yeah, <me? laughs> I've been here the whole time. We'll take care of it in post. Culture's got it. <clears throat> 
Oh, it's just that easy, is it? <laughs> One oh <my> Apparently. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if this the thing that spell here. <laughs> Willingness of Eld. Is there anything else I could be investigating while they think about that? <laughs> There's several murals on the side of the rooms on either side. Of? Um, it shows dwarves. Uh, uh, so those, those um, it shows shows dwarves, and they're offering things up to those holes in the ground, and tentacles are coming out and taking... <laughs> taking the gift. And then it shows a set of eyes, like six eyes uh, within one of the pools and an oracle of some kind supplicating it. And then the last mural shows a king sitting on his throne alone as the tentacles crush the skulls of all the other dwarves. <laughs> Does somebody want to make an intelligence check just to figure out the puzzle, or do you guys want to keep yeah. working on it yourselves? Yeah, <laughs> I say I don't. I'm not a high intelligence, so I will leave that to uh, to Mr. Lizard Man. I only got a ten. Alex, you do not know what's going on. <laughs> uh, Sixteen. Nineteen. Nice. Well, Bellin, you walk up and go. Ugh, just do this, and you you push in W. E L L, and you hear a clicking sound as the door behind the throne slides open. I was thinking we had to use all the letters. Okay, that's what I was doing too. I was just, I, I got well of I and G, and then I had a bunch of leftover letters. I was like, I can't spell something with this. Uh, yeah, so I will do exactly what I've been doing this entire time and going with the straightforward, logical, survivalist solution. And just type in well. <laughs> uh, the doors slide open uh, to a room. Uh, coming down over the lip of the room is a small trickle of water. As the entire room, uh, which is about six inches. So you enter in, and there's a lip about six inches high. And then set flush with the ground under six inches of water is a stone circle uh, that uh, it's basically a well, but it's flush with the floor. It's but this water seems to be bubbling up from somewhere deep, and even as the water spills out, it continues to fill. Is so we have to go. Well, we're looking for. Well, <laughs> it seems to be. And uh, across the far wall, as you enter. Uh, bioluminescent mushrooms illuminate a picture of a large tentacled creature with an insectoid-like face um, and a dwarf in supplication to it. That's not inspiring, but the cat said into the well... I don't know another That's solution. What was the last part that I wrote down for you? The cat sent? Uh, descend into the deep well? Oh, yeah. yeah, I guess we have to go down there. Um, rippling across your thoughts is a cold, wet, damp voice. And deep in the well, you see six motes of light illuminate. As you hear a voice through your head, so is why have you come? For the spirit would. I can take you to the spirit would. Is there a cost? Yes. What is the cost? You must. Worship me. Let's see. 
What are you? I am the deeps. He who holds the gate. Okay. If that is what it takes, then we will happily worship. When winter crosses the world and you have no place to go, you must seek me. Seek you we shall. And know this, any who enter the tower of woe shall be forsaken unto me. Unto you, Lord of the Deep. And with that, the lights fade, and inside the well, stairs start to uh, slide out from the sides of the well in a spiral staircase going down. Look back at the others and proceed into the darkness. Do it. Uh, so who goes first? So as your foot descends upon, uh, past the plane of the top of the well, it disappears. There's no pain, just cold. I continue. Uh, it, as more and more of your body uh, crosses the threshold of the well, it seems to dissolve into the well itself until you're up to your waist and all you can see is the top half of you. But you can still feel your feet. I will trust and continue. I, I, I see no other path forward. This is my logical path. So I, I continue downward. Felon continues until you see nothing left of him. I oh, yeah, sure, like everyone else, someone stick up the rear. Oh, this is true. Maybe if I go down there, I'll wake up. So I, I'll go next. Same with Alex as he slowly dissolves into the water. I go. <clears throat> Same. Chetan uh, next. Yep. And Korth is going to go, but he's holding his breath because he doesn't trust it. <laughs> All of you, uh, as you reach the bottom of the stairs, which is a sandy bottom, uh, realize you are now standing at about a shin's worth of clear water, and you are surrounded by trees, and you hear bird song. As you are now standing in a shallow pool in the center of a glade inside of a forest. It worked. It worked. It worked. <laughs> the cat wasn't uh, lying. Along the uh, edge of this um, glade, you see fruit trees of every type imaginable. Well, I think we're here. Don't eat anything yet. And as you look up, you see that same Dyson sphere that you saw from the wastelands. The cat said somebody would be here that could remove whatever these things are. Well, we have enough food. We should try and find them first before we experiment. Great. And with that, I guess this is a good enough stopping place as any. <laughs> Welcome to the Spirit Wood, dear adventurers. Uh, thank you for joining us on this uh, little adventure of ours uh, into the Isles of Madness. Um, the heroes have made their way to the Spirit Wood, uh, the only green and an otherwise barren wasteland. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for Scott. Um, yeah. uh, if he can make yeah. it next week, we would love to see you again, but it's up to you, obviously. 
Uh, and you have to make me at least 50 of those shirts. Um, so we can start selling them online. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, guys, start being Patreon so I can get at least get the money for the shirts. So start subscribing <laughs> to the Patreon too because we need to get the money for the shirts. It didn't and happy come from birthday, us. Scott. It, yeah, happy oh, birthday. Happy birthday. How old are you now? 17? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like tw- 17, 20 years ago. <laughs> Thanks for spending your birthday with us. Yeah, I had a blast. Thank you guys for inviting me. And I guess with that, we will um, say the tagline we're supposed to say, which uh, I do not have handy. <laughs> Culture? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were looking it up. <laughs> I have been saying, which I believe is true, um, we wish you friends, fun, and natural 20s. 20s. Catch you next time, guys. Catch you next time. See ya. Yes.